Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be explaining you about the fundamentals of buoyancy. So, first of all, let's see what is buoyancy. I think you have heard the word buoyancy, right? Buoyancy or buoyant force or buoyancy force or force of buoyancy. All the words means the same. It's nothing but so it is nothing but a type of force called buoyancy force. I think uh, all of you know what is a uh, gravity force, right? So the entire weight of the body will be concentrated at one place called as the center of gravity and uh, the weight always passes through the center of gravity. The weight of the entire body passes through the center of gravity and acts vertically downwards. Why? Because uh, earth, uh, the earth is subjected to gravitational force and uh, it will try to uh, pull any object towards it hence the weight of the body always acts vertically downwards so when you throw any object or any body into the water what happens the fluid will exert some force on this uh, body or on this object so the upward force exerted by the fluid on the body is called as buoyancy force so your gravity force which is nothing but the weight and the buoyancy force are always opposite to each other. Weight always acts downwards vertically whereas your buoyancy force acts upward. It will try to push the object upwards. Okay. So when a body is immersed in a fluid an upward force is exerted by the fluid on the body as I've told you. This upward force only is called as force of buoyancy and Mathematically, this force of buoyancy will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. It means when you throw any object or any body into the water, what will happen? You observe practically some of the water will come and fall outside, right? Some of the water will be displaced, some of the fluid will be displaced, right? That weight of the fluid displaced only is equal to the buoyancy force. Clear? So, According to the definition, it is the upward force exerted by the fluid on the body which will be in the upward direction uh, which will be opposite to the gravity which is weight and mathematically to calculate the force of buoyancy, it will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. It means when you are throwing the body or uh, when you are inserting the body into the fluid, obviously some of the fluid will be displaced outside that weight is equal to this buoyancy force. Next comes center of buoyancy. Just now I was talking about weight. So the weight of the body is assumed to act at a single point called as center of gravity. So every object in this universe has its center of gravity through which the entire weight of that is concentrated or it is supposed to act. Similarly, if you consider the entire area of any object to pass through a single point that is called a centroid. Similarly, as I have told you, force of buoyancy is acting in upward direction and if this entire force is supposed to act through a single point, then that single point only is called a center of buoyancy. So, in short, center of buoyancy is the where the point through which the force of buoyancy acts okay next the center of buoyancy will be the center of gravity of the fluid displaced so to locate the center of buoyancy practically you can just know the center of gravity of the fluid whichever got displaced just now i was talking if you want to know the value of force of buoyancy take the weight of the fluid which got displaced if you want to know the position of center of buoyancy just calculate the center of gravity of the fluid displaced Next comes meta center. What is meta center? Meta center is a important parameter that need to be considered when you are studying, especially about floating bodies. Okay, so when uh, you throw any object into liquid or uh, water or any fluid, it will float. Only some part of the object will get submerged, and the other part will be open to atmosphere. Then it starts floating. So those are called floating bodies. You have submerged body and a floating body. So meta center is especially concerned for floating bodies. Okay. So 
Meta center is defined as a point about which a body starts oscillating when the body is tilted by a small angle. Say suppose observe this diagram. I have a body. Okay, I have an object which is some rectangular shape. Okay, so you observe some part of the body got submerged in water and some part is open to atmosphere. So this is the regular normal axis of the body. So G is your center of gravity. B is the center of buoyancy. Now what I'll do is I'll try to tilt the object towards the right hand side. Okay, I'll just try to tilt and leave it. So what will happen now? the body starts oscillating you know oscillation movement right it starts oscillating towards this normal axis right that point about which this body starts oscillating is called as meta center if you find difficult with this definition i have also another definition for you it is the point at which the line of action of force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is given a small angular displacement so again consider the same body give a small displacement and leave it means give a small tilt and leave it what will happen so the normal axis is like this it got tilted but uh, as i told the body will start dancing right it will start floating so what there is liquid all beneath this what this liquid will try to do obviously it will start exerting the buoyancy force so from the force of buoyancy I mean from the uh, center of buoyancy I already told you this force of buoyancy will act at center of buoyancy so from there if you try to draw a line such that it meets the normal axis of the body so where both of them meet together it's called as meta center and towards this meta center only your body starts oscillating okay so meta center is the point where the line of action of force of buoyancy what is line of action of force of buoyancy where the force of buoyancy it is now a path created by the force of buoyancy so where force of buoyancy line of action and the normal axis of the body will come and meet at a point then that's called as meta center next so what is meta centric height i told you what is meta center where the line of action of center of buoyancy and the uh, normal axis of the body are meeting then that's called as meta center and that uh, towards that point only your body will start oscillating all the time but what is meta centric height meta centric height is nothing but the distance between the meta center of the body and the center of gravity okay the distance from m to g is called as meta center meta centric height and this meta centric height plays a major role this meta center m the position of this m plays a major role in the stability of floating bodies okay that i'll cover in my next video based on the position of m only you can decide whether that floating body is stable or not sometimes the body will be stable sometimes will drown you know you observe practically right but how it is happening is based on this m only based on the position of m and g only okay so meta centric height is the distance between the meta center of the body and the center of gravity of the body clear and this meta centric height is denoted by the distance mg and you have two methods for determining this meta centric height one is the analytical method and the other one is experimental method i'm not going into detail but i'll just tell you the formula regarding this analytical method and also the experimental method so coming to analytical method of meta centric height so it is given by the formula gm or mg you denote it with anything is the same distance from center of gravity to meta center is equal to i by for all for all stands for volume minus bg so i is the moment of inertia of the plan of the body means regarding this plan the moment of inertia of that plan and for all is the volume of the body submerged i told we are doing this for floating bodies right so you can see uh, if you observe this body from here from d to only this point it is submerged again this part is open to atmosphere so i'm not concerned with that volume i'm concerned with the volume which is only submerged that's for all here bg stands for the distance between the center of buoyancy and the center of gravity okay and you get this distance bg by mb minus mg okay like that also you can do so what i'm trying to tell you is in an analytical method uh, yeah it's bm minus bg what i've told you already in meta centric height uh, calculation in analytical method we are concerned with moment of inertia volume of submerged part and also the distance from center of buoyancy to center of gravity 
I'll explain you this in detail when I solve a problem then you'll understand how we are taking I values how we are taking volume values okay I'm doing especially a video on numericals related to buoyancy why because they have a very good weightage in all competitive point of exams point of view and also all the undergraduate exam point of view they they have a very good weightage this concept of buoyancy hence I am solving numericals and I'll show you how to uh, understand in taking the values of I and volume and BG and so on next is experimental method of metacentric height here you take any floating body and on which is of weight some capital W and on that you place another known weight which is small w1 and you give a tilt so what will happen obviously the weight which is at the center will start tilting towards the side so the formula for metacentric height is given by again obviously the body starts oscillating back so you get a meta center m and the meta center distance mg is given by w1 x by w tan theta w1 is nothing but the known weight which you have placed on the actual weight and uh, x is a distance by which you are uh, known weight got displaced once you tilt this object obviously it will move towards the extremes right so that distance x and capital w is the weight of the complete body including this w1 theta theta is nothing but the angle of tilt how much angle your body got tilted okay so using this formula you can also calculate the metacentric height so in sort of numericals you can understand which formula to apply whether this one or this one based on the given data so that's all about the fundamentals of buoyancy so people generally get afraid of buoyancy but there is nothing uh, what do you call uh, need to worry about this buoyancy concept just have the definitions in your mind have the formula in your mind these concepts are more than enough in buoyancy you see any textbook any place buoyancy means buoyancy definition center of buoyancy then metacentric meta center and metacentric heights so this is very important and what I want to tell you is in my next video we will, let's solve numerical problems related to buoyancy which will be a little bit difficult but once you practice it becomes more easier okay so for the notes of this concept you can just click on the description and download hope you understood this video and thank you